Just when you think you got away, they're going to bring us back in. What do you think about that, Craig? I, with both hands, they're bringing us back in, Glenn. It's Friday, and you know what that means. Time for an audit. I'm Glenn Houseman with the one, the incredible, the absolutely fantastic Craig Sullivan. Craig, how are you, my friend? Aloha, brother. I'm great. How are you? Cheers. I, I got to tell you, cheers. Great to see you. You, you, know, you asked a very complicated question, how am I? And I got to tell you, I've got a very complicated answer for you. Finally, after a year of being at home, I finally decided to get a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more relaxed. Well, Really, I've just completely given up, and I got my first official pair of sweatpants, Craig. I'm wearing them right now, and I don't think I'm ever going back to real pants. <laughs> you know, for some reason, I can see you on stage with a jacket, a shirt untucked, and sweatpants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. All right, I'm just going to do a quick audio check over here. Nope, my microphone seems to be working right. All right, so, Craig... I can't believe we made it through last week and we're here again. I want to thank everybody who's tuning in to tonight's show. I'm very excited to have each and every one of you here. Of course, Friday Night Audit, we're trying to make things a little bit different, a little bit more fun. We're going to have our drinks. We're going to, we're going to have our good time tonight. We're drinking the Tequila Sunrise. And we're going to chat a little bit about most of uh, what we're looking forward to. When we get back out there on the conference circuit, then we're going to talk about Mars and its connection to the spirit of innovation, the spirit of hospitality. And then, Craig... I'm really yes. excited about this. We saw a post online asking, what are some of the dumbest questions you get from guests? And we are going to reveal what they say. Plus, of course, lots more too. Absolutely. You know, and we've got a very special guest joining us today. Oh, we you know who that is, right? I do know who it is, but I do before we bring in our guest of the week. It's me. I want to <laughs> <laughs> producer David, come on in. <laughs> I want to, what I want to do is I want to thank Kate Berna for joining us last yes. week. Kate, thank you for being so willing to sacrifice decades of hard work in one failed hour of comedy. Uh, Greg, she disappeared. Word is she's moved to Siberia. I hope the same doesn't happen to our guests this week. Oh God, I hope not. I first of all, I don't. I don't know if he's got the clothes for that. Okay. He's another California person, so he may not have the wardrobe to go to Siberia. Yeah. And I don't know if Amazon delivers out there. So yeah. <laughs> we'll see. All right, so let's bring it to the show. Mr. Stephen Medell of Pacifica Hotel. Well, gentlemen, thank you. For me. How are you, cuz? Doing, doing, fan, doing fantastic. Cheers. cheers, cheers. Cheers, cheers. I want to tell everybody this week's drink, of course, is the tequila sunrise, or here in the East Coast, it's more we're getting more towards tequila sunset over here. Anyway. I'm Glenn, and I would like to say that this uh, this is sponsored by the Regal Beagle. Of course, you know it. I'd like you to invite you to come down to the Regal Beagle. You need a place to go because you know what happens to you all the time. You partially overhear one of your roommates' conversations. You inevitably jump to the wrong conclusion. Craziness ensues. Maybe you fall over a couch, and you keep wondering why every time you come home, there's a different blonde woman who is your roommate. Well, come on down to the Regal Beagle. We're here to help you. Come on. Knock on our door. We'll be waiting for you. All right. <laughs> I, am, I, am, I am so not prepared. I just realized how unprepared I am for this. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. For those of you who don't know Stephen, he is the Vice President of Business Development at Pacific Hotel, Pacifica Hotels. And Stephen and I go back so long, I call him Cuz. And that's one of the stories we'll get into later Can tonight. Now, yeah. yeah. You might know Pacifica is strictly being a boutique operator, but Glenn Hausman, breaking oh news, they're not. <laughs> They've also got soft-branded hotels. Wow. So, Stephen, welcome to the show. Wow. How are you guys? Doing, doing Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. It only took two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, now listen, yes. Have we been known as the independent guys by the beach? Certainly for many, many years. But but listen, we uh, we are also the guys that put the largest courtyard in North America, uh, at least in, in the continental US, out in out in Hawaii, however many years ago that was. So, uh, when we when we dipped a toe in the Pacific over 10 years ago and did the courtyard King Kamehameha Kona Beach Hotel Kailua Kona, I think that got us officially 
we, we officially became a branded company at that point. But thank you, Mark. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my God. Craig, Craig, you know what I'm so bad at? I, what? I did it again. Nothing. I know. I, I forgot to do this again. Now this is brought to you by the Rico. Now it's cocktail time. Cheers, guys. You would think yeah. Glenn hosted a daily show every day that does the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's Forgiveness Friday, Dave. You don't have to give me such a hard time. I don't know what the deal is. Anyway, um, so you, you've got all sorts of different sorts of uh, hotels. How does that really matter when it comes to the critical nature of happy hour? Oh, gosh, what's the most important thing is where's the bar and what's the proximity to, in our case, how close is the bar to the pool or how close is the bar to the ocean? I guess ocean. that's probably the most important thing. <laughs> I, I, I actually, I think that's a really good point. And, and to be like to be hotel serious for just a second, I bet you're able to help, you know, raise the average check level by putting the bar closer to where people want to just hang out. Well, absolutely. You know, the, the sunset is probably one of the easiest uh, entertainments or entertainers, you know, that costs the least amount of money, other than, of course, it costs money to be anywhere near seeing a sunset rise below the Pacific. Mm -hmm. But that's where people want to be. And so as as the as the evening starts to wind down and people are getting comfortable, they want to move as close to the edge of the glass, whether it's on a rooftop, right. whether it's by the beach. Um, and that just seems to be the, the natural place, right? People congregate where there's fire and where there's water. And when you got this beautiful sunset out there doing this and everyone wants to find the green flash. Oh my gosh. If I heard <laughs> if I the green flash one more time during this pandemic, it's ridiculous. Anyway, anyway and Glenn, I've got it. I've got some breaking, breaking news over here. Uh, Mark Gallagher is saying, Hey, what's the recipe for the drink? And Mark, that's a great point. One of the things that we totally fell short on this week was having the graphic with the directions on it, but better yet, promoting it a couple of days ahead of time so you guys could drink along uh, with us. But we're going to be working on that. We're going to make sure that you could all do it, but I love this. What is it, Dave? Uh, equal parts tequila and orange juice and then a splash of grenadine? How's that How's that work? Maybe you could... Uh, so what you're, trying, what you're trying to do with the tequila and orange juice, and mine's melting in now, but the idea is to hopefully get the grenadine to sit on top, and that's where oh, you kind of get that, yeah. that sunset effect where it's like orange at the bottom, a little red on top. I'm traditionally terrible at it, so my grenadine typically goes straight to the bottom, making it a tequila sunset, two different drinks. Um, some people have tricks of putting a little splash of club soda on top that supposedly keeps the grenadine on top. I've been a massive failure my entire bartending life at actually getting it done. So maybe not the best person to talk about that, but pretty simple drink, tequila, OJ, grenadine, done. Right? Nice. Beautiful. Don't overuse the uh, grenadine. Is there a science to it, Dave? Do you think that grenadine needs to be cold? I'm sure there are a lot more mixologists much smarter than me that have been in much better bars than I used to work at that know the answer to that. But I'm more of a pub kind of guy. So I was just going to say that's why I'm a beer and a wine drinker. That's easier. Uh, uh, if, you're you in a pitch, if you're in a pinch, you can make grenadine at home. It's uh, equal parts uh, water and pomegranate juice and a little bit sunflower petals or oh. something like that. Yeah. I don't know where the sunflower petals comes in, but sounds good to me. One of our viewers, Peter, just said sunsets are amazing in Newport Beach, and he's absolutely right, Peter. Good call. Cheers. So, Cheers. Uh, so you know, one of the things, um, one of the things that I want to know, um, Stephen, being that you're here and we're drinking tequila, it is important for you to share with us, regale us with the tale, if you will, about a tequila-related story that you had on the road to either make you look like a hero or, more likely, we hope, a big fat zero. Oh my gosh. I don't know if there's any positive stories that have ever come out of tequila. Um, oh gosh, I had a great, so my, my grandfather, my grandfather was a huge influence in my life. And uh, there was a great moment that me and my cousins had, we were at a wedding and he was determined that we were going to finish this bottle of tequila. It was a great bottle. Uh, Don Julio 1942, uh, which is a great, oh, which is a great, great, great bottle. Um, and we finished it. The oh. wedding was a success. The tequila was amazing. Um, and that was, I, I don't know that any of us were too, too hammered to not remember the moment, but it was a great moment with my, with my grandfather and some great cousins. So yeah, 
De no nothing work related. I can honestly say nothing ever work related ever happened <laughs> with tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Which well, means you know work related happened with vodka, with gin, with <laughs> oh whiskey, um, <laughs> with beer. Yes. Different story. Different hey, drink. you know, one of our viewers was just saying, Amy Montgomery, and hey, shout out to Amy. She was here last week with us, and she likes tequila. She said to cut through it, just go for the tequila. And Amy, I appreciate you uh, joining us for two weeks in a row and signing up for Click Virtual. Thank you. All right. So, um, you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now, guys, right? So I'm thinking yeah. maybe... We take a little bit a look what's going on right now. All right. So uh first uh first little bit of the uh the news that I want to talk about is listen, guys, we've all suffered tragedies large and small during the year. And some were a lot harder to take than others. We could choose to be sad about the real ones there, but I really choose to be sad about the ones that are entirely in the scope of things completely, incredibly meaningless. So that one leaves me with one thing that I'm really upset about, one thing that's left me shocked, confused, with absolutely nowhere to turn. That's right, you guessed it. I'm talking about my frequent flyer account tally going back to zero for the year. Oh. I can't take it anymore. February 1 is always a tough day. It's when my frequent flyer count hits zero. But this year is more difficult, harder than all of us, but particularly me, guys, because I am so close for the last year to get a million miles finally on Delta Airlines, but I'm stuck at 984,291 miles, just a little less than 16,000 miles, 16, miles left until they don't really care about me and give me a silver status. So I'm very upset about that. Are you guys missing your, uh, your, your, your frequent flyer miles? Probably not as much as you, uh, you know, yeah. I, I, uh, I stay out on the West coast the vast majority of the time. If I'm in New York, it's once a year. If that uh, so. hold on one second, uh, I would like to say, AJ, the machine shed hoodie is right over there for as soon as the show is over. The hoodie goes right back on over here. Right, well, I'm you guys aren't feeling the same pain, the same suffering I am. But I got to tell you, I am really mourning uh, the loss of some of the things that I get to do uh, when I travel, right? I'm honestly I'm mourning the loss of always worrying I won't get pre-checked this time, even though I got it the last 379 times straight. And then I got that sweet relief that washes over me when I actually got it. And I said to myself, oh, yes. You got it. You got it. And then I just hit the line and pass by the suckers. You know what? I also, I also mourn that I'm missing out at standing at the gate and impulsively hitting the refresh button on my app, hoping to see if I got that upgrade. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I also, I also really mourn the loss of eating Popeyes. And I mean only eating Popeyes, the Atlanta Hartsfield Airport in Concourse B or D. It is my treat. But it is so good, I have to limit myself to there, which is uh, really terrible. And um, most of all, guys, I don't know what – I want to hear what you miss most of all. But most of all, I think I mourn the loss of no longer having to position myself at the baggage claim close enough so I can grab my bag quickly, but not so close I seem a little bit too eager. So these are some of the things that I'm missing out there. Uh, Craig, what are you missing? You know what I'm missing? I'm missing the hotel lobby. I'm missing the vibe. I'm missing the team working at the hotel. I'm missing the hundred people in the lobby and trying to figure out what all these hundred different people do and what their story is. You know, that crossing the threshold, walking in and just going, yeah, I enjoy this. That's what I miss. I miss three of us sitting around uh, the fire pit at the Arizona Biltmore when the lodging conference was there. Uh, I, I miss, you know, going up to Northern California and seeing some of the hotels up right. there and filming my, my other show. I know, I know. So, Stephen, what do you I know miss? exactly what you mean. I miss hanging out with Stephen as well. Thank you. Uh, you're too, you're too kind. Uh, you know, you know what I miss them. We've got some amazing, we've got some amazing destinations, hotels within the company that I think we're really fortunate to have. I miss, and we're starting to come back this, just this coming week. 
We'll be having one of our first meetings at our rooftop in downtown LA at the Wayfair. But I miss those, I miss those golden opportunities where we get the opportunity to host clients and host guests and whatnot and do it in our own app, do it in our own setting at our own hotels across the country, you know, throughout California and Hawaii. I miss it. I, I miss being able to bring Craig on over. Craig and I have a long delayed meeting, what we're supposed to be doing on the rooftop of the Wayfair. Wow. Or, you know, I, that should have happened a year ago. Hasn't been able to happen yet. Um, thing, I, I guess work related, it's those relationships. Cause I hold these, I hold the relationship so near and dear that I've created in the hotel industry for the past 20 plus years. So do I miss all the handshakes at the conferences and the exhaustion and losing my voice? You know, sort of, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. I, I miss having a short, meaningless conversations where I only have to pay attention for about 45 seconds at a time before plotting an exit strategy. I miss that a lot. You know, <laughs> pretending that you have another meeting across the room. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't miss those. Right. But I, right. I do miss like the week that went past, you know, a couple of weeks ago that would have been Alice. That's a great time. It's a great time for us yeah. because this is, because this is our backyard. Right. This is, you know, work-wise, this, this is our backyard out here. And it gives us an opportunity to kind of showcase LA. It gives us an opportunity to have a lot of fun, bring clients, friends, and everybody together from different, all from different layers and, of, of the industry, and I miss that. That was that was a huge that was a huge miss this year for sure. I also miss um, seeing somebody have a little interaction with them, and then later on, when you're walking by them, you've both mutually agreed without words to pretend you don't see each other. <laughs> That's my <laughs> really miss. No, <laughs> so that doesn't happen. Nod saying, "Hey, we already did our thing. See you in the next city." Yeah. I miss that one too. Yeah. Oh, too funny! Too funny! You know. Ah. You know, do you do you miss all the gourmet meals? Hmm. I, I think my my blood pressure and my cholesterol is way better right now. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I, you know, that's that's part of the fun, right? That's part of the reason I think why those of us who have been in this industry for as long as we have is it's fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have we have a good time. We eat well. We drink well. As much as I've been telling my wife for years, she goes, oh, gee, Stephen, she's like, you have such a rough life. I'm sorry. You were in Austin this week and Nashville last week and you're in Arizona golfing this week. And oh, now you get to go to Hawaii. Like, honestly, so most of those times we may never even leave the hotel. I'm lucky if I get a I, I'm lucky if I go I actually put a toe in the water, if, even if I'm in Hawaii. Like I've yeah. literally gone to Hawaii for work and I've not stepped foot in the water. water. Except for you know, except for in my own, in my own hotel. Room. That's yeah, I was about to say, you don't have to share your, your lack of showering, you know, regimen. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, I'll tell you, uh, I'll, I'll tell you when, when my family gives me a hard time, oh, you get to eat all that stuff on the road. I make them all stand in a corner eating something off a tiny plate while holding a cocktail. <laughs> they don't understand how complicated it is being on the road. Well, while hitting the back of their seat while they do it. <laughs> now try that. <laughs> well, sorry, Glenn doesn't understand. Glenn's in first class. That doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, everybody knows I've got no class. Do not get that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, oh, I, yeah. I do like getting those upgrades, and I do miss getting those uh, upgrades. Uh, that's for sure. Hopefully, uh, we got some comments about. Yeah, Amy, uh, Southwest is extending it. My uh, my program got extended as well. I'm still I still got my platinum status, but I can't accrue new miles. I'm stuck. I want to take my family over to uh, you know Japan and have plenty of miles to do it in style. And I'm so used to gaining, gaining, gaining the miles. And psychologically speaking, I can't handle that. I got nothing. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Glenn, you look at your travel normally, you know, first quarter, you've already been to Europe. You've been to LA. You've been down to Orange County. You're in Phoenix again and then somewhere else. So, yeah. Most of the time these days, I'm just, uh, I'm just down at the, uh, the Regal Beagle hanging out. There you go. That's a, that's there you go. Uh, the Regal Beagle is another word for my kitchen, I guess, because I'm <laughs> <laughs> that, that's for sure. So what do y'all think about uh what do y'all think about this uh this new Mars rover and stuff like that? Craig, you were telling me um that you really thought it was um very symbolic of uh the optimism and spirit of the nineteen sixties and hospitality. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at you know NASA and the original Mercury Seven, 
putting a man on the moon. It's one of the last times this country was totally united. And, you know, all of our major hotel brands were just kicking off them. You know, you had Hilton, Marriott, and Hyatt, everybody else just really coming to life. You know, send that, all of them. And yeah, at that time, uh, now Wyndham. But yeah, the Mustang, the Camaro, Man on the Moon. Come on, rock and roll. The Beatles were here. It, it was a great time. And I think it all goes back to that, that vibe of creating a hotel, a gathering place, you know, where you've got a, a unique group of people that are all pulling in the same direction to take care of a guest and make sure that your experience and your stay is just the best possible that they can provide. So. Right. Breaking yeah. news, breaking news. I need a, where's the, the thing, Glenn? Breaking uh, news down. Come on, quickly. Do, 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 do. Something. That, how about, so the new Mars rover uh, just transmitted some oh, yeah? first picture, and guess what? What? Tell us. Unfortunately, Stephen, you cannot be the first man on Mars because someone's already there. Oh, Matt the Damon? is here to prove. Hold on. We left him back in. <laughs> <laughs> we have been beaten, guys. We will not be the first ones there. You know, it was like two weeks ago, and it feels like two years ago. Oh, no way. so many memes out there. I don't even know who thought to even do this in the first place, but kudos to that person. Uh, I know. I, I got to say, that's the coolest thing about um, – the, uh, the internet, in my opinion, right? Because there's so much creativity, so much interest. Yeah, there's hate, there's vitriol, there's all that fun stuff out there, kids. But there's all of that creativity that's out there. And I could laugh and laugh and laugh if I choose to find that stuff. Yeah. And, 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 well, Glenn, you and I laugh all the time, so. Yeah, yeah. Mostly, uh, you know, he gives me kind laughs at my uh, horrible dad jokes and stuff like that. Mark Ergang says... I look so much more relaxed with that sharp looking bald guy wearing a tie on the other side of the microphone. Let me tell you, Mark, I am so much more. the pressure of trying to make sure that I don't say something stupid where he yells at me. That's it's too much, too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anthony is so much fun to work with though, but yes, this is definitely a different vibe that we have over here. Listen guys, Tell us what you think. Tell us some of the things that you're missing from the road. Tell us some of the things that you'd like to see when you get back out there on the uh, the conference circuit. Do you miss that food? Do you miss the people? Do you miss just all of it? You know, I really miss, guys, that um, that feeling of excitement when I just get there and I'm checking in and I go to my room and I put the key card into the door and I open it up and it just feels like, ah, this is just, what is the possibilities that we're going to be able to, to have? What experiences are we going to uh, go through? What kind of deals might we be able to make? What kind of cool people are we going to get to uh, to learn from? I just, I, I, I miss that part too. You know, the one thing I don't miss is my key card not working. So, <laughs> you know, I always have to go back down to the lobby again. You know, I enjoy that. And I'll usually make a side trip and stop somewhere. But, you know. <laughs> not a seasoned traveler, Craig. Not a seasoned traveler. You got to call the yeah. front desk from the house phone. They'll bring you a key up. Hmm. I just wait too long. So that's easier for me to go down. Uh, yeah, last week when I was at uh, the Resort World up in um, Monticello, New York, in the Catskills, I did that rookie move of leaving my keys in the room, and I came downstairs and had to go to the uh, had to go to the front desk with the shameful. I'm sorry. You know. Well, I'm, I'm honestly David the first. running I around the whole time. Uh, Peter says he misses seeing people's faces. I do too. Not all people's faces. There are some faces I prefer not to see, but for the most part, yes, I agree. <laughs> I'm the actual worst person because I work in hotels, yet I still oh, yeah. my key in the room. I forget my key. I put it on my cell phone and deactivate it. And I'm always going down there. I need another key. I need another key. I need another key. <laughs> the worst. The absolute worst. But do you keep all those keys or do you ever return any of the keys? I either I do either return them or leave them in the room. Uh, the only hotel keys I've actually kept were the keys from Xena because I thought they were pretty cool. Right. And those were pretty uh, those were pretty cool. That's a Visory uh, branded hotel in Washington, D.C., of course. Uh, we were there right after the election in November. So if you want to go see what that hotel looked like, really cool, guys. Um uh, it has um, so much great artwork. It's very uh, feminine focused, very, you know, women are awesome. And since women are awesome, it was just such a great place to uh, to be. 
So, um, all right, uh, your crowd today is a great vibe. I really miss uh, hanging out with my friends and enjoying your great goose on the rocks with a splash of crayon and three limes. Or nice. Great. Yeah, I agree with that. But you know what I don't miss is uh, the people at the eye candy bar at Mandalay Bay saying that'll be $23 for that one drink. <laughs> You got you got to start making friends at that bar, Glenn. I don't make <laughs> bar. I make friends who have the expense accounts, Stephen. Mm, go. Good point. See, that's that is a seasoned traveler right there, my friends. There you go. That is someone who beats that convention trail path more than others. Well, that's part of that's, that's the part travel. Of, you've got to find out with the people who've got flexibility and budgets that don't really mind, and then you know you just kind of gravitate towards them. Of course, there are certain individuals out there that poor poor. Or people that get slammed with the bill, they get stuck with it all the time. And there are certain people out there that just get stuck with it over and over and over because it's really difficult. Because if you're holding court, people come, they go, they order drinks, they they gravitate, they leave. Nobody's even thinking about it. There's this weird yep. preconceived notion that if you're on the road, it's got to be free. <laughs> you know, well, those, I mean, Stephen, you probably can talk to this more than I can, but uh, as someone who is uh, leading in hotels, I'm assuming after COVID, those expense accounts are going to be coming down a little bit. I was, just, okay, so I was just thinking the same thing. Like there's yeah. always the guy that you kind of look around who you, who's historically had and has <laughs> been allowed to have some of the most craziest expense accounts that's out there. There there's a, uh, there's a couple people out here in California Friends, <laughs> who, who, I, who I can think of, and I'm not going to mention. I'm not going to mention on this show. They maybe used to be entitled. Maybe they were a broker once upon a time. Uh, those were the days, man. Like, yeah. Those, and I, I think they'll come back, David. I think there's going to be a certain amount. Somebody may actually put the bill themselves, as opposed to putting on the company Amex or something like that. But uh, there were some fun, fun days. So those those people that have the big expense accounts, if um. Women marry rich guys and are trophy wives. Are these like trophy friends or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say these guys don't get left. They 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 very rarely are uninvited. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Sure. Mark, real quick, Good Mark. Point. I know not to put my key next to the cell phone. I know it just ends up happening. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Keep so, hey, Stephen, are you uh, putting? Uh, all the smart technology into your hotels right now. I was just thinking the same thing. So we started to, to do it selectively and it, and it seems to be working and then boom. And we thought with COVID coming on, we thought we would start to see that like hyper accelerate where right. people didn't want their, they didn't want the key card because if we could right. minimize, minimize some of that interaction at the front desk and somebody does the mobile check-in, we shoot them the room key. Believe it or not, there's still guests that want that. They need that interaction. And and frankly, we do too at the front desk because we want to know that the person who we thought was checking in and their name was Craig Sullivan actually ends up being Craig Sullivan and not, well, I, I don't need to tell you what kind and of not Glenn Houseman impersonating me with my yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need to tell you guys uh, what the, how the profile well, I, I, I sometimes I just kind of uh, put on a fake beard, long hair, and I prance about a little bit. Easy. <laughs> hey, just, 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 just do the laugh too. Har har har! I love the laugh, Craig. <laughs> the profile of guests has changed so greatly, at least in LA. I don't know about the rest of the country, but at least in LA, the the profile, the, the guest who stayed and paid two hundred and fifty bucks a night. A year ago is not the same guest that's paying 200 bucks a night today. Yeah. So uh, it, it's 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 imperative that there still be that interaction at that front desk so that we we know who the heck is staying in that room. Oh, yeah. uh, that's an interesting point of view. Yeah. Well, another part of it too, from the operations standpoint, you know, those guests that go straight to the room, the, the front desk, especially a check-in from experience, is a great touch point to learn how you can enhance that guest stay without them even knowing you're doing right. it. Right. So you can ask probing questions. You can right. find out things about this guest just through conversation that all of a sudden you pop up and they're like, wow, I didn't even know I wanted that, but this is the most amazing thing. That's how you can really, you know, excel and stand out amongst a lot of, what's the word, uh, brands consolidation or just kind of the same standards across the board. Yeah. Just vanilla product, frankly. Yeah. I mean, everyone's, everyone's looking for an experience. I don't care where you go and I don't care what price point you're willing to pay. But you're looking for something that blows you away, and what's gonna what's gonna get me to tell somebody about my stay, or what's gonna get me to come back? Otherwise, it's just otherwise it's just another stay, right? And as often as we do it, as often as as Glenn, as often as you travel, I I, I highly doubt you go back to the place just because 
you know, the bed is comfortable. You, you go to the place because the bartender remembers your name. You go back to the place because the front desk gives you that free upgrade to a that is Exactly right. I always say, you know, you don't come home from a trip and say, oh my God, you're not gonna believe the lamp that was in my room, right? Nothing personal, it was a great lamp and the people who made it are great people. But that's not really is what's connecting with guests. It's as those personal one-on-one -on -one interactions that really define a stay, that create the emotion behind the stay and get people yeah. to want to come back again and again. Yeah. And uh, I am out of a drink, so I have to make another one. There listen, I, 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 when I'm training my, you know, my line staff all the time, I tell them, listen, you will look at a survey and you've never in your life heard of a survey of saying, well, the, the, the bathroom was great, the room was great, but the service stank. The service was complete trash, they treat me like hell. But you'll see surveys all the time that come in that say, toilet had an issue, light was, the room was too dark, but I give it, give it a nine because the staff was just so amazing. Yeah. That's really what takes it over the top. There you yeah. go, yeah. Or very, very yeah, rarely, they may say nothing. They may, they, may, they, may, they may forgive little things. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. The service was over, like, I'll be, you know what? Yeah, so there were some cobwebs, but their service was incredible. And then and they may not even mention it. So anyway, I don't, I don't know how we got on this, but other than saying- That is yes, the whole well, point, Stephen, is that this is, what, this is what the spirit that we're trying to capture. We wanna, we're hanging out after a conference, we're at the bar, we're just talking, the conversation goes yep. from here, it goes to there, goes to everywhere. But you know what's the one thing that they don't have when you're hanging out at the bar is a quick commercial break. I think we're gonna take one now. Enjoy these couple of ads. We're a blast from the past, we'll be right back. Reservations form 1 800 441 4410. So, Whoopi, what do you think? About what, Steve? About what? Have you ever seen a resort this beautiful in your whole life? This tropical lagoon? Oh, it's a great, it's great. Yeah, and look at those are 50 foot palm trees around you. They're big, yeah. big palm trees. There's nothing like it in Las Vegas. Yeah, you're right, nothing. <laughs> look up. For what? The pool. Fantasy becomes reality when the mirage appears on the Las Vegas Strip. Can I have a towel, Steve? <laughs> Great. <laughs> And of course, I'm Glenn. I've got Craig. We've got Stephen. Producer David is also here. Listen, please share the show on social media. Let other people know what we're doing, that we're having a great time over here, that we're having some cocktails, that we're spreading the love to all of you. And I uh, hope you guys like those ads. So if you guys want to sponsor our ad, be a real sponsor, drop me a line, glenn at rouse.media, or you can find Craig at cliconference.com. That's Craig at cliconference.com. So what do you think about that? Can you can you believe there's a time in Las Vegas that seems just like yesterday before the Mirage was there? I, unbelievable. That commercial is that just was crazy. Crazy. That was so good. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And Dave, you're too young to remember this, but that Mount Airy Lodge commercial, man, that I grew up with that stuff on uh, WPIX Channel 11 or WOR9. I could have uh, hummed that whole tune to you. And there was that one part, I don't know if you noticed, where the woman gets out of the small pool that's in the bedroom and the guy wraps a, you know, wraps a towel around the woman. And I'm like, that is the coolest thing. I would love that. But how gross would it be to have an indoor pool right next to your bed? <laughs> now, Glenn, did you, did you transfer over bringing it to modern times, the uh, the Moose Jaw commercial. Oh, you know, I have that Moose Jaw commercial. So um, uh, earlier, in, early in the week of No Vacancy, Glenn started a show. There was a great, great ad campaign. I'll tee you up, Glenn. So basically, from what I understand, there were some, uh, some violations of Canada's COVID protocol where some government officials ended up flying down to the Caribbean for a vacation against the rules. So this uh, town yeah. called Moose Jaw in, I think, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan came yeah. up with this awesome, awesome ad campaign, and I will let Glenn take it from here. Yeah, so this is a really fun ad, and that's, again, this is what I like about the show. Who would have thought that I'd play this ad? I think you guys are going to enjoy it. It's different, and the reason why it caught my attention, because um, who sent this to us, Craig? Who sent this to us? 
This is a, this is a moose jaw commercial. You know, exactly. I don't, I don't recall. I'm sorry. We yeah. should know. It was me. It was me. Tequila Sunrise ends. What? Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying it was me. I sent it. I'm taking yeah, credit. Yeah. Taking all the credit for this. Oh, it was Audrey DePew over at Hager. Sorry. Yes. Okay. So yeah. she said this ad. I fell in love with it because one of the problems that we see with a lot of the ads out there is they're boring. They're the same. They don't really mean anything. Right. People walking on the beach. They're just that woman getting rocks put on her back. They're just all of those standard images that don't connect. <laughs> to the the time. Now this is something different. This is something I like. This is something I built up too much. Now you guys aren't going to like it nearly as much. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Canadian politician taking heat for going away at Christmas? Listen up. I'm Fraser Tolmy, mayor of Moose Jaw. And I'm notoriously lucky because I don't need to take the heat to get away from it all. Why? Thank you. Because we have it all right here in Canada's most notorious city. Mm. We have all the amenities and no shaming. So, if you're someone trying to escape from it all, do what Al Capone did. Come to Canada's most notorious city. We'll never tell. All right. What do you think? That was great. Thank you, Andrea DePew and Hager International for sending that over to Glenn and I. That is Thank just you, Audrey. Perfect. And just so everybody knows, I reached out to the Saskatchewan and the Moose Jaw Tourism Association. I got permission to show it. All right. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, because they all just cover all your bases. Way to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, exactly. it's maybe my first day doing uh, journalism, but we'll, have one. Might as well give, it, give it a try. So what do you guys think about that kind of uh, an ad compared to the uh, old ads that we watched? Actually, I think there's a lot of similarities, just a, you know, a bit of updating. You've got uh, you know the Rat Pack and the vibe from Vegas and the Mirage, and we've got everything here in the most notorious city. So I, I think there's, you know, there's a line there that uh, connects uh, through time. And look at that. Duran Lalani's here in the audience. Isn't that great? And, uh, let me put this up. Carol, thank you so much for saying you saw it this week on No Vacancy, which you can watch every day at noontime Eastern. Right here, whatever channel you're watching this. Hey, Glenn, did you see one of our future guests is also watching the show? I'm hoping she's still going to join us. Which? <laughs> Lori Gardner at IHG. Yeah, I, so. It was real bad telling her about this show before she came on. <laughs> I know, but, you know. Hey, she sent me my new everyday carry, so she's, she's helping me with my uh, caffeination in the morning. I've got this huge IHG. Yeah, yeah, but Holiday and Express. By the now. way, I found that very offensive because the cup looked very deliciously uh, perfect for drinking coffee out of, and I don't have any. So <laughs> from across the country, I, I got the last every morning. Right, every morning I have to look at you. You've got the coffee mug. Oh, it's so great! <laughs> <laughs> hey, but we both have the same bottle of tequila. We do. So um, this is a, this is a great tequila. We are not getting compensated for it, but I really like it. This Casamigos tequila. Who would have thought? George Clooney and uh, buddies would be so good at it. But Randy Gerber, who of course is a pro right. impresario due to owned a lot of uh, famous places got involved in that liquor is the business to get in. I can't believe Sammy Hagar sold that tequila brand for what a hundred million dollars or something like that. Right. 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 Wow. And then George yeah. and Peter sold theirs. It was out for maybe a year, a little bit longer for $600 million. Yeah. Doesn't The Rock have a tequila now? I think he's in yeah, it's, called, it's called Terramana. It's supposedly pretty good. Well, listen, yeah. we all know what the deal is. If you're a celebrity, everybody has a podcast and everybody has a drink that they sell. <laughs> well, Amy, Amy wants to know what kind of tequila it is. So can you guys share the wealth? Uh, Casa Amigos. It's a, uh, a Blanco. Category. Here, Glenn, Blanco, I'm, I'm going to put you on a one shot, Glenn. Let's see the bottom. Out of Jalisco, Mexico. Uh, pro... Uh, pro uh, Proyecto GC RG MM. That's probably the most important part. It's the silk. It's yeah. That's the silver, right? A blanco. Oh, good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's really good. It's very smooth. It's very yeah. tasty. 
we, we really should stop advertising them. <laughs> it's a really yeah, good yeah. dipping tequila. It's yeah. it's so for future reference liquor brands, promote with us. We'll get your name out. Yes. Yeah, come on, share your drinks. Tell, tell us about the uh, the history of that. Hey, and I, I stock it in the uh, Aloha Craig Tiki Bar, so, you know. That's nice. I like that. The, the Rock plugs people who – the Rock will plug people on his Instagram who create videos with showing his showing his tequila. So if there's ever a, a Terramana video for one of these and you put it on Instagram, there's a good chance he'll pick it up and he'll share it. Very, very clever. You know, smart way to get uh, get people to drink your drink. Yeah. yeah. Well, Glenn, Glenn, you got to get on like some Duolingo or Rosetta Stone. I don't know somewhere. Listen, Amy, I took nineteen <laughs> eighties, and I was a complete failure at it. I could say I I was very good at pronouncing things in Spanish. I wasn't actually good at speaking Spanish, which was the problem. And I will tell you my speaking Spanish story that. Uh, uh, I I had to, I hated taking Spanish so much. You're supposed to, how much did you hate taking Spanish? Well, anyway, I hated taking Spanish so much in college that I just put it off and put it off and put it off. And my last semester of college, I had to take that last Spanish level class, and I was so bad at it. But I this is going back to 1993. But I struck out a, a rapport with my professor who happened to like this TV show Seinfeld. And I happened to have a bunch of them on tape <laughs> and I gave him the tape of all the shows that I had. And uh, somehow I passed the panel. I passed the final. And I got to graduate from the university of Maryland. So uh, thank you, Jerry Seinfeld. And I wish I could have learned Spanish and had it uh, kept with me, but uh, mi casa y su casa, you know, that's you know I Glenn, you, you, you know, you think you, you being in New York, it's like being in California. You should be fluent in Spanish, okay? Now, for example, my vocabulary in Spanish is gigantic, okay? It's hola, gracias, señor, señorita, tequila, taco, burrito, baño. All right. Yeah. And now you're just showing off, Craig. All the main, all the main <laughs> ones. <laughs> Borderline offensive, Craig. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, the Orchez part of my family is, is going, no, he's not doing that again, is he? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you, Carol. All right. So um, you know what? We went, uh, we looked out on the internet. We found some uh, some of the most uh, strangest questions that hotel guests ask when they're in property. Let's uh, Let's do that. <laughs> Right, so hold have, on. Can we can we can we keep a running tally of how many of these? I'm gonna, I'm gonna I want to hear these, and I'm just gonna ding how many times I've heard the same question at some point. I'm okay. sure. Are you ready? Are you ready, David? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. ready. Property level experience. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I want to hear from both of you some of the most ridiculous things that you've heard, and that goes for everybody that's uh, paying attention on YouTube, on Facebook. On LinkedIn, I want to thank all of you for watching it. I'm poking around from the different sites and seeing we've got a nice little audience over here. All right. So um, the first one is, uh, do we have an ocean view? And of that, of course, came from the uh, North Lake Tahoe. <laughs> <laughs> a hotel in North Carolina just comes up to the desk and says, um, hey, it's snowing. How are the roads up in New York? <laughs> right. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I actually got the ocean question at the Crown Plaza Newark Airport once because they thought they could see out over the port. <laughs> of you. Oh, yeah. Actually, um, I had multiple. There were multiple ones up there from California where people would look at Catalina Island and say, uh, "Hey, is that Hawaii?" <laughs> right yeah they were all all in retro palace verdes <laughs> uh, this one um, there's a duck in the pool how dare you let that happen <laughs> uh, and of course the favorite i did not watch this movie but sir it says you watched it for 20 minutes it's on the printout <laughs> <laughs> again, again being confused about where you uh, are in key west can you see cuba from here and another Key West question is, uh, how many times a day do they do the sunset celebration? <laughs> and, uh, being that I went to the University of Maryland in, uh, in College Park, this one hit uh, close to home. 
Um, people asking, um, what stores are there at the National Mall in Washington D.C.? Which is always a which always. Ah. <laughs> Oh, God. I can imagine that's a that's a very popular one. I can imagine. Hey, Stephen, what about you? So you know, I'll start with the benign ones. I guess the ones that always drove me crazy would is when people and so I, I started in Five Diamond, and so people always expected something very lavish, and when they weren't eating with us, they wanted to go out. So it was, um, where should we go eat? I said, well, and it just was always, well, what do you want? Well, I don't really know. What's good? Well, there's a lot of good. Let's start with what do you want? Like, do you want Spanish? Do you want Italian? Do you want steak? Do you want seafood? And at that point, they were usually so overwhelmed that they, uh, I don't know, you pick. And so then we would pick. And then you find out that the person has an aversion to <laughs> whatever that you told them to go to because it's one of the best restaurants in town. My bad, but I'll, I'll get it better next time. Uh, Steven, that's exactly the conversation my wife and I have every night. I tell her to pick, and then I'm offended at the choice that she makes. Yeah. <laughs> but the, 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 the less benign and the one that it was embarrassing and made me blush, and it's probably – it's the one that I'll always remember, was um, there, there was there was a group of gals – She you know, age is not important here, but there were four or five gals in a guest room and they were the, one of the women was getting married the next day and while we went to go deliver i think we delivered a bucket of ice and some champagne to the guest room she said i stated a place does craig already know the story she said i've stated she said um i stayed at a hotel one time where the front desk host uh stripped for us i wonder if, i wonder if this is that type of hotel and i handed her the bucket of ice with the champagne and the tray and we said is there anything else we can get for you we left, said, thank you, turned around, we left, we went back to, we went, you know, laughing, going, oh my gosh, did that really just happen? Uh, she came over for something else one more time and she goes, this is your last chance. <laughs> and we went, wow. <laughs> I, I, I said, well, my days on property are done. <laughs> you should have asked her how much. I, it, that would have been a very complicated question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave, what other kind of experiences have you had with people asking uh, crazy questions? Well, obviously, the ocean question at Newark Airport was definitely a good one. Uh, I actually had somebody talking about restaurants, Stephen, who wanted to go to a local restaurant, but obviously didn't drive because he had just flown in, and asked if he could take our sh if he could drive our shuttle bus off property <laughs> to the restaurant. Uh, so that one was, was, was obviously a quick no-no. And then another property where I was working uh, at a major airport was on the airport property. And as you're in the property, it's, you can see all the terminals as you're driving in. You can't miss it. Person comes up and says, uh, we're flying out tomorrow. Uh, where are the terminals at? And I'm like, well, look right out that look out, out that window right there, and there it is, right there. You just passed them all. <laughs> and airplanes going by, <laughs> right? <laughs> Third and and final one. You know, the thing about these questions is, at least most of them are they're harmless. They're they're honestly just really funny, just because these people are so excited to be out and, and traveling around a lot of the times. But uh, again, Newark Airport, somebody comes up and says, uh, oh, "Where's the A train?" And I'm like, huh? Well, I heard you can get the, the A train from this airport. Where is it? I'm like, are you thinking of Kennedy? <laughs> He's like, is, am I not at Kennedy right now? I'm like, no. <laughs> no You're at Newark. <laughs> True story. Oh, I, just, I, re I remember I remember another one. So a gentleman called up to the hotel and said, hi, I, I, my name is my name is so and so. My wife says her by name. Um, I'm sure there was a lot, there were a lot of teaching lessons after this phone call, uh, <laughs> says my wife and gives her name. She says she's, she's staying at the hotel. I know she's in room such and such. Can you transfer me over? And, and, uh, I said, well, I, I, I don't believe we either transferred the call or we said, um, she hasn't checked in yet. Mm -hmm. And he said, thank you. I'll try back. I'll try her back later. She calls five minutes later. She says, my husband is crazy. He's trying to find me and I'm trying to leave him. If he calls here, please do not let him know that I'm staying at this hotel. And I said, he just called. Oh, God. <laughs>
Oh, uh, dear. Well, but you know what? At least you got her before she got there, so she had time to pivot. So she she worked it. She's like, "It's not your fault. I should have told you sooner." I go, I, "I'm so so sorry." And, you know, there was lots of teaching lessons after that one. Yeah. I think I was like 20 years old. I learned a lot of what you do and you do not say, even when somebody knows the person and says they're the husband. And anyway, it was that was unfortunately do and do not say. I think it's become evident that Craig and I are still learning that. <laughs> Unfortunately, those lessons are typically learned uh, as a baptism yeah. by fire type of thing. Completely, completely. <laughs> yes, Amy. Yes, very, very rough. And unfortunately, uh, I've had similar stories. Luckily, my baptism by fire wasn't with me personally; it was with a colleague. So I learned the easy way. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very easy to have those things happen when you're when you're just starting at the desk, especially you very young. Here's here's another fun one. Uh, are you going to charge us for just sleeping in the room one extra night? <laughs> Steven, how many times have you, have you, I'm assuming you've at one point or another worked night audit? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How this, many, this, this kind how of many times have you, it out. It how many like, times have you gotten the, uh, uh, it's past 12 o'clock. Why do I have to pay for two nights? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That one is the common one. Oh, it's two in the morning. I got to pay for last night. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Still considered a night. Yeah. yeah. Um, contacting the guests the next, so, you know, uh, the room attendants, the housekeeping goes to the room and they, they find things that are left over. <laughs> and I still remember these guests. They left over some things that you don't want to leave behind in a guest room. Right. We called them and we said, Hey, your toys, toys. No, the word was massager. <laughs> we, we think you left the back massager in the, ho in the hotel. But we were very discreet with the way that we said. They go, no, we didn't leave anything. We go, no, you checked out of such and such room. All of our all of our rooms had names. Every room was named. It wasn't like 101 or 121 or 131. Um, they each had a name. And uh, right, all of a sudden they learned how to only speak Spanish. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, real, real quick. Um, I've had that. I've had that call with the uh, with the the person the, the gentleman calling was. Not very discreet at all. Didn't care one bit. Said my wife left her so and so in the room, and I'm on the way back, and somebody put it at the front desk for me. And I said, "Okay," and we did. So wow. that Adam, that item stayed in our lost and found, I think, for two years. <laughs> Surprised I made it that long. I know. Right, Glenn, maybe that's maybe that's your next social media question, Glenn. What is the weirdest or freakiest thing you found in a room after a guest has checked out? It won't. Because every answer is going to be sex toy. Yeah. Be a matter of the size of it. <laughs> right? So I got, uh, that's why I put up a question last week where I'm like saying not sexual related because everyone's still going to answer that. I was just trying to get other answers besides that. So yeah. we can have yeah. something to talk about other than that. <laughs> you know, we, we, so we, we had a lot of, so we had a lot of celebrities. Um, it was high, it was a high profile property in Santa Barbara. Um, so we'd get a lot of, we get a lot of celebrities who just wanted to disappear. Um, it's the things that you find how those people live and whether that's the way they live at home or that's what they do when they're just in a hotel. Ooh, I think yeah. that was some of the most like, yeah. like some of the funniest people on TV still today. And this was, this was 20 years ago that I was, you know, yeah. and you, it's hard to get those images out of your head. But you know, as well as I do, Steven, and then all of you guys know, a lot of times the hotel is the place you can go to, to feel at home with, but do things you wouldn't do at home. So yeah. yeah. Mark Ergen with a really interesting comment here. I think I like this one, but a, a Braille <laughs> Playboy magazine. I've never heard of that one. That wasn't Braille, Mark. The article? It wasn't Braille. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steven, when you see these celebrities today, do you automatically flash back yeah. to that experience 20 years ago? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was working for a hotel company and we were having a meeting at a hotel uh, with the owner and we walked into one of the suites and let's just say housekeeping hadn't been there and the people that had left, it really made a mess everywhere. And the owner was coming in right behind me. I couldn't back out and back him out before he saw it. Oh, he just, he, he came on board. Oh, man. It was just unbelievable. Mm. Well, listen, guys, that's been fun. But now 
I know you've been asking for it. I've been getting emails about it all week. Glenn, can we please have people plug more shit? Whoa! Got it right for you. Steve Mandel, thank you so much for being here. How can we find you? How can we learn more about Pacifica Hotel? Great idea, putting your brand on a shirt to plug yourself. Best plug. Shameless. Not even a shame, not even a shameless plug. Please go check out <laughs> no, hotels.com. No, we're, we're, we're excited. So we're, we're celebrating our 50th year right now, everybody. Uh, hell of a time to celebrate 50 years, but also a very proud achievement to be celebrating 50 years in the industry. Um, so we're doing a whole refresh, new logo, new website. So please go check that out real soon. Um, you can you can find all my all my information, everything about us, you know, the properties we own, the properties we manage. Uh, look forward to chatting with all you guys soon. And uh, Glenn, David and Craig, thank you so much for having me here today. I, I could do this all night. Yeah, it was a, it was a whole lot of fun. Pleasure, Steven. Thank, thank you, guys. Cuz. I really appreciate it, cuz. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you. All right, Steve, I think you got to go pick up your kid, right? I got to go pick up kids from school. Yes, believe it right. or not. We'll let you go and then we'll we'll just finish we'll finish up the plugs without All you. Right, guys. Take, Take care. care. Well, right. Take care. Thanks, Steven. Poor <laughs> choice saying that you're going to go and uh, pick up your kids, you know, when you're when you're hanging out with us. <laughs> oh, happy hour cavalcade of fun david you got a brand new episode out it looked like i'm i'm minding my own business looking at the internet and boom up comes a new episode of be my guest absolutely try to do it every tuesday now we did delay this one a little bit because obviously tuesday uh morning there was some unfortunate news uh which we don't need to get into here but i uh, delayed the release of that episode a couple of days in honor of uh in respect for for that news but yeah, really, really great episode came out with uh, Amrita Nichols talking a lot about you know driving yourself forward and making sure you're really best positioned to get that next job or get that next opportunity. We have another great one coming out uh, next Tuesday with my friend Bianca, who was a veteran of No Vacancy Live. So uh, stay tuned for that. Excellent, Craig. Guess what's coming? California Logic Investment Conference <laughs> virtual. Yeah, not only. A I gotta be there. Glenn's there. Producer David's gonna be there. But don't let we've me also got from attending the event. <laughs> yes. And we've also got uh, a couple of our guests watching the show. Amy's gonna be there and Lori Gardner from IHG. Matter of awesome. fact, you can visit her in the IHG guest suite because their development team will be there along with eight other brands. That's I'll so. catch uh, Lori while she still has uh, dignity before she uh, comes on our show and destroys that wall. <laughs> now, before we move forward, Glenn, and we do your shameless plug, I have to point out Mark Ergain's got a good story yeah, here from me. I was, yeah, I was thinking exactly the same thing. So Mark was doing a room inspection with his SVP, checked the room several times, but when, he, when the SVP inspected the room, he lifted the toilet tank lid. We're not talking about the toilet bowl. We're talking about right. where the water is in the back. And they found a six pack of beer that was keeping cold. So, Mark, I think you win for a funniest executive story. I'll tell you what, I think the guest wins. They're being environmentally conscious by conserving water flow while keeping their beers cold. So, but they forgot it though. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's a bad part. Yeah. Too funny. Uh, hold on for that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right everybody be sure to check out this show next friday night and of course we've got a uh, no vacancy live every day at noon and a couple of times a week we're doing no vacancy news today where i take a serious look at the news and my analysis it's pretty much diametrically opposed to everything that you just experienced now i want to thank Stephen medell for being here what a great hey. guest. guys that was so much fun tonight i had a great time mike mcmanus says he's off to go still kill some bed bugs mike have a great time with that. BBs. Right. We don't ever say the magic word in hotels. BBs, barbecue, something else. Come on, Mike. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for the love and give me a chance and Craig a chance to be our real selves, not the pretend selves that we have to be in order to fit into society and be able to pay our bills. Thank you guys so much. We love you. And Craig, any final parts? Any final parting words? Hey, the lights are starting to go out in the Aloha Craig Tiki Bar, so it's time to say aloha. It's been a great show. Great seeing everybody. Glenn, producer David, thank you. I'll see you guys later. Dave, thanks for being here. Craig, thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Have a great weekend.